Pamela Anderson is, without a doubt, the most stereotypical Playboy girl. She is the only model to have appeared on the cover of the magazine 14 times, despite the fact that the magazine has featured many other beautiful women. Thanks to her 1989 appearance in the magazine, Anderson's career quickly took off. She was able to use this as a springboard into the acting world and land other modeling jobs. Not long after, she became an instant cultural phenomenon, thanks to her role as the girl in the red swimsuit on the smash television series Baywatch. Oh. Have I met you somewhere before? Yeah, yesterday. Remember, you picked up my trash. But Anderson has had a rough time in Hollywood, especially when a sex tape she made with her ex-husband Tommy Lee went viral. The former model turned actress who was on Piers Morgan's Life Stories revealed that Harvey Weinstein bullied her and Sylvester Stallone proposed to her. She said, Stallone offered me a condo and a Porsche to be his number one girl. Then I asked, does that mean there is a number two? She said Stallone answered, of course. According to Anderson, there was only one man who showed her kindness during her time in the business world. And it was none other than Hugh Hefner. Playboy's former head honcho, Hugh Hefner, who passed away in 2017, had a shady image. When asked by Secrets of Playboy about the founder's alleged horrific crimes, his ex-lover Holly Madison said, We were all kind of gaslit and expected to think of Hef as, like, this really good guy. Is because we were all kind of gaslit and expected to think of Hef as like this really good guy. Another ex-girlfriend of Hefner's, Carissa Shannon, said that having sex with Hefner was like an assault, as he had complete control mechanisms. Yet, Pamela Anderson painted a different picture of Hefner. After his death, she told the Sunday Times that he was the only man who had ever treated her with complete and utter respect. She also thanked Hefner for his role in her life's transformation. When I did my first cover with Playboy, it was like a small window opened up into the world of being a sensual lady. The choice to explore my sexuality was all mine. It was time for me to reclaim my authority. Anderson wrote warmly of their first encounter in Love, Pamela, in which she reflected on her relationship with Hefner. She described him as elegant, passionate, so charming, and yet with that little boy giggle. She also said she immediately thought of him as a true gentleman. Many people throughout the world shared Pamela Anderson's sadness at the death of Hugh Hefner. She shared a video of herself sobbing on Instagram with a poem she labeled Goodbye Hashtag Hef to illustrate how deeply she was hurting. She thanked Playboy's creator for making her a household celebrity and gushed about him in the letter. You were the most significant person in my life, second only to my family, and you were the one who gave me my life, as one line in the poem put it. I will miss your everything. Thank you for making the world a better place, a freer and sexier place. Anderson defended Hefner, even though several of her fellow playmates had spoken out against him. She went as far as to name him a civil activist. She also said that he's empowered so many women and broken down walls. When asked if she felt exploited during her time as a Playboy model, the model insisted that her actions were all her own. We exploited ourselves, she said. We were free to make our own decisions. Anderson's new autobiography titled Love, Pamela spans a lifetime in about 230 pages. More than four pages are dedicated to each year of Anderson's life. And those who have read it all attest to the fact that each following page is more captivating than the first one. Going by what the reviews say, the reader is often left wanting more. Maybe it's because Pamela deals with each subject with striking brevity, as Mary McNamara of The Times writes in her review. Or because, as Anderson offers more generous facts, a plethora of new issues arise. The first of many is her abuse as a child by a babysitter. Regarding the matter, she said, I realized at a young age that most people are horrible. The worst of them are babysitters. That's what happens when adults play too rough with you when you're a kid. A young female babysitter molested me at a young age by making me play strange games on her body. Mom would give me gently worn playthings, such as a large Barbie head, that I could use as a model for my hair and cosmetics creations. My parents were fooled into thinking
thinking she was a nice person because she was generous and kind. No one word made any sense to me at the time. She warned me not to tell anyone and even threatened me. Of course, there is a limit to how much detail Anderson will remember or agree to relive in literature about a horrible event from her youth, but without further information. It is difficult to grasp what is being alleged. These two paragraphs only scratch the surface of the issue and Anderson's response to it, whereas a fuller picture may have shed more light on its lingering effects. Perhaps it would have helped those who have gone through a similar experience or are trying to protect their own children from harm. Child molestation aside, Pamela Anderson also recalls her first time doing a professional photo shoot and her autobiography she recalls. I shifted slightly, grins, no smiles. Cap to the side, jacket open. Tracy returned to give me last touches on my face, lips, and hair. When she did, my jacket zipped up a little more. Additional shots with the photographer adding compliments like, wonderful, you can be rest assured that you are flawless. Tracy gave me some extra cleavage by touching my boob. They told me my ribs were too sharp, so they urged me to round out my stomach. I felt dizzy and sick and had to stop. When I got nauseous, I had to get to the restroom. I felt quite sad though. I just couldn't accept the fact that a woman had touched me on my boob. Luckily, a Canadian football fan spotted Anderson and immediately had her flown to Los Angeles with hopes that she would be featured in Playboy. And before you know it, Hugh Hefner is swooning over her. Now she began to live like a queen at the Playboy Mansion, and things just picked up from there. However, she was not always the confident Pamela Anderson we all know now. She admitted in her book that her confidence had taken a hit, all to that perverted babysitter. I guess that's why she felt uncomfortable when the makeup artist touched her boob during her first photo shoot. Pamela recalls, coming to terms with the fact that I was still a work in progress and that my past might have had a significant impact on my self-esteem was challenging. Could it also be that her decision to pose nude was because she lacked confidence as a result of her traumatic upbringing, which apparently extended beyond the babysitter? Alternatively, was she implying that her identity crisis as a girl stemmed from her years as a self-described tomboy? I guess there's still more to be discovered from Pamela Anderson's past. Another issue she discussed in her book was the leaked sex tape with her then-husband Tommy Lee Jones. She claimed that they never intended to make a sex tape, but she did admit that they were always fond of filming themselves in their most loving, intimate moments. The tape leaked when the safe where it was being kept got burglared. She also claims that she and Tommy Lee Jones were offered $5 million to sell off the publishing rights to the tape. It eventually leaked without the couple collecting a dime. mansion was very cult-like looking back on it is because we were all kind of gaslit and expected to think of Hef as like this really good guy. Well, thank God they're so big. Anyway, they're little, um, they, I remember they came off surf camp and they were coming up, they were six years old or whatever, and they so came cute. up and they said, are you Pamela Anderson? 